I have been involved in these kind of discussions for the last oh, 20 years or so. It reminds me of when I was at school, when one week you would be discussing the abolition of the death penalty, and next week talking about bringing it back. You can make good arguments for both sides of the question. Now, being the last speaker is both easy and difficult. So I'm going to be rather personal. I have scrapped most of my notes. And because I was born in 1931, I'm past my sell-by date. And therefore, I take a very personal interest in this possibility of having an easy departure from this world. Now, we are fortunate we have a very good palliative care system in this country, one of the best in the world. And Professor Finlay is a well-respected expert in that field. And for many people, the existing palliative care system will be fine when they come to the end of their lives. But there are many other people, like myself, who would like to have the option of perhaps an earlier death, of a doctor-assisted suicide. And I stress the word doctor, because doctors must be involved in this process. They must evaluate the medical reasons that the person wants to die, and also to judge that person's mental competence. Now, if I get untreated cancer, for example, or motor neurone disease, I don't want my wife or my three daughters to see me waste away. I'd rather have the option, perhaps a few months before my expected death, to die, to have a doctor-assisted suicide, when I'm more like my normal self. Now, when I was being introduced this evening, it was mentioned that I have accompanied people to Switzerland and been their witness there when they had a doctor-assisted suicide. I've been on four different visits in recent years. Two of those people were terminally ill. One had advanced motor neurone disease, one had cancer of the pancreas, already quite jaundiced. They were very determined individuals. It's not easy to go to Switzerland. All kinds of Swiss bureaucratic procedures must be followed. But I witnessed those two individuals, near the end of their lives, have a very dignified doctor-assisted suicide. Doctor-assisted suicide is, for the terminally ill, is possible now in six jurisdictions in this world. In the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Switzerland, and in two US states, Oregon and Washington state. And in two or three weeks' time, there will be a referendum in Massachusetts, when hopefully they will re-elect President Obama, on the very issue of whether they should have doctor-assisted suicide for the terminally ill in that state. <coughs> now, are we so different to the people who live in the Netherlands or Switzerland and Oregon? Of course not. And I can certainly ask that question more personally, I hope in a few weeks' time, because I have two daughters, two son-in-laws, and six grandchildren in Massachusetts. So if they change the law there, I should be delighted. A third person I accompanied to Switzerland was severely disabled. And I watched him have a doctor-assisted suicide. Now, we've all seen in recent weeks or recent months Tony Nicholson on our TV screens. Seven years in a locked-in syndrome situation. Just imagine if any of us were in that situation. He wanted to have a doctor to help him to die. He was mentally competent. Surely all of us in this room 
if we were in that situation, would have wanted a doctor to help us. The Swiss were willing to help this third person I accompanied who was severely disabled. The fourth person I accompanied was on March of last year, a personal friend of mine, a woman almost 85, whose life was progressively declining because of progressive arthritis. She knew she hadn't got many more natural years to live. She was determined to issue or to end her life on her own terms, on her own choice. And she was so relaxed about the process that 15 minutes before she swallowed the lethal Nembutal liquid, she asked someone, do you have a nail file? This nail is a bit sharp. A nail file was produced. 15 minutes later, she died. Now, I'm 81. I have a problem with walking. You saw how I made a dramatic entrance here this evening. I partially dislocated this joint. I put it back because one of my medical knowledges came back into my mind. But I haven't got many more years to live. I would like to go to Switzerland. I belong to Dignitas. And it's like an insurance policy. I may change my mind. I may be happy to rely upon the good palliative care system we have. But I want to have the option to end my life sooner, if necessary. Unfortunately, my wife and daughters support me in that. I'd like to just quote you one thing, a statement from the European Court of Human Rights, because this is basically a human right issue. In 2002, it said, in an era of growing medical sophistication, combined with longer life expectancies, many people are concerned that they should not be forced to linger on in old age or in states of advanced physical or mental decrepitude, which might conflict with strongly held ideas of self and personal identity. I believe very much in this possibility of old age, rational, doctor-assisted suicide. And the Swiss are willing to help people like this. All right, the, the opponents to tonight's motion will say, this is a slippery slope. You help determine the ill, and these, all these changes would have to be, of course, brought about by democratic process, by parliament. But the Swiss help the terminally ill, the severely disabled, and the elderly with medical problems. Are we so different to the Swiss? Technically, you can say it is a slippery slope. But let me give you an example of a good slippery slope. Think how you get the vote in this country. Years ago, only rich male landowners could vote. For them to have the idea of other people having the vote, that was a slippery slope to them. Yet other men got the vote, then women over 30, then all adults over 21, then all adults in 1969 got the vote at 18, and now in Scotland, at, from the age of 16 onwards, they'll have the vote, or at least on independence. And that, to me, is a good example of a slippery slope. I would like you tonight, tonight to personalize this issue in your minds before you vote. I'm sure many of you have had elderly relatives or even younger relatives who have died. Most people die fairly easily in this country, thanks again to the good palliative care system we have. But other people would like to have the option of a doctor-assisted suicide. So when you come to vote tonight, please support this motion to legalize assisted dying. And assisted dying covers both 
doctor-assisted suicide and maybe one day voluntary euthanasia. And maybe slightly of my tongue in my cheek, I would suggest to you that maybe good palliative care is an example of assisted dying. Thank you.